we'll have you as our first guest when we go live. La Lela, you heard it. <laughs> it's not, not even a contract is needed now, guys. They like all record and can use those words. Black House Talk. Black House Talk. Yeah. Black House Talk. In Jalindav. Black House Talk. Black House Talk. Black House Talk. Black House Talk. Come on. Black House Talk. Let's talk. Black House Talk. Black House Talk. Come on. 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 Black House Talk. Oh wow. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> what a wow. One, two, three. This is the first episode. San Bonan. Out. I'm going to go San Bonan in Lin. Gacha Bruce and Hill Namakosa Makulu Namshanje. Ucha Hip. Ucha Hip. So we introduce her. We'll show you. Wait, wait. Just hold on. This is, this is still the first episode. Uh, like. Oh. Okay, cool. I am Prof. <laughs> Thank you. I am Silo. Howdy, Game Prof. Howdy, Silo. This Cilo. is. This is this is we have to, today with us we have an, an actress, a businesswoman, an entrepreneur. What else is she? <laughs> she's she, she's she's poetic. She, she's a, she, the most importantly she's a mother. I'm yes. a mother. I'm a spirit unfolding. I'm a woman on a journey. I know that um, nothing is definite, and I am ever evolving. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I tried you, Prof. I tried to go poetic. I tried to launch the show with a high standard. Wafi gum tom nyama wati pizza usilo. Back to reality. <laughs> I am so honored to be here, gentlemen. Um, for me, I feel like I'm in the presence of God. And I don't say that lightly. Um, may everything you touch turn into gold. Thank you so, so much. So for me, Thank you it's so much. like to, to, to include me in this moment that's unfolding and it is so profound for you. I have this thing where I don't know how to respond to compliments. Yeah, ah, no, really I can't see. they're getting awkward. It's so it's so rough because uh, they're getting so awkward. So this is about you, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> this is about you. So yes, yes. Leave it on the floor. It's fine. We'll get you get us another one if it breaks. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> Pay cut so early. Yeah. Um, what are we doing? Tell us about yourself. Where you're from? What do you do? What, For what? the people who've never heard of you. Of, uh, of, oh, sorry. Oh, this is Ufundi Swazwan, if you haven't read the title by some odd reason. Uh, gentlemen, it's a to have me on here today. My name is Fundi Zwane. I am a young woman who grew up in a small town called Pochepsen, which is south coast of Durban, uh, now known as the Ugo region. And a tomboy of note growing up, especially in high school, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, like, oh, I was, like, great at sports and shit. Like, I played netball, provincial, first team, pretty you much. You were head girl. Uh, oh, image, <laughs> I was head girl, that. listen. <laughs> Shapey High stand-up, class of 2003. Uh, hey. So, yeah. So, I, even at a young age, I, 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 I was an achiever, but I fell in love with this thing called drama because it's Konu Tisha who saw some potential in me, Mrs. Schoenauer. So, your school had drama? Yes, it did. Hey, you're so lucky. It offered it as a subject. It also offered it as an extracurriculum activity. So you went to those fancy schools. Huh? I went to that posh shit, dog. I'm the not even gonna lie. Are... Look, parents invested in, edu- in 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 my education the best they knew how at the time. Yeah. So they equipped me the best they knew how for the reality they knew that I would contend with. But in doing that, so much more unfolded. Mm. in finding who I am. You understand? Yeah. So a, a lot of sh- has shifted obviously since then, but the one thing has remained consistent, I believe it's the excellence. I believe it's the effort that I put into things. Uh, and I've, I've seen that pattern from, from quite a young age that I'm willing to put in the effort to get the results. So that's what's been consistent about me. Mm. So w- do you, would you say you learned that from Indli Nakaya? or? Stanley's. Or how how about how how was, so was that instilled? at home was it as brutal as you know wake up at five a.m. clean <laughs> and then uh, yes <laughs> wow and then deal with life <laughs> yeah you understand no um I'm not gonna lie I came from two parents um who worked really really hard so Wakono Anto says Ayekaya so it was brutal at five a.m. but there was someone to nurture and mother that process um which is why I don't understand when someone locks down on a nanny what a profound role it's 
to take on, to hold hands with a woman of a household. And that's what my mom did, and that's how we grew up. So we knew a warm love of aunt or sister, who have yeah. to do the hard stuff, the not easy stuff. And then Uma, obviously, implementing systems so that the household is... We're the Ah, they tried me. They tried. Listen, they tried to groom a woman who for marriage... They try to groom a woman under the they my reality. I understand. Too late. <laughs> they did not contain for she's gonna have shaved. I understand. <laughs> I derailed <laughs> from the <laughs> <laughs> baba oh figure and I'm not take two man je is new lazy could you like what is happening? I understand that you understand. Here's the thing about change, I guess. Yeah, it's like so what change, you're fighting to change the structure, except you're not aware that when you change the structure, all the other structures get affected. This is correct. So this is from everything, like even feminism has got a lot of other things which it dismantles in That's itself. That's correct. So then you, leave, you have a lot of people who are attaching to certain things, which then leaves them without an identity when they fully have to let go. Mm-hmm. So it's not just um, women gaining their more... I don't want to use the word privileges, but mm. for lack of better words right now, I'm going to yeah. say it's not just women getting more privileges. It's also the old men who don't want to let go of these old ideas, then having to let go and have this ego death of sorts and redefine what being a man is. And it is extremely necessary for our evolution as as is uh, is, uh you know what I mean, that process of letting go as a man of everything that you believe to be true, take that risk to, it requires a certain level of vulnerability. And for us women to say, if prof lets go, I do not take advantage of that. And, and you know, then you, you get a whole lot of hashtags coming up, you know what I mean? When we as humans are starting to call each other trash, I understand the intention behind it and the ideology, but I could never prof. How do you when feel about men as trash? I've got many feelings about men as trash. I've got many feelings about human as trash. I, I, I Do you endorse it? Do you cannot, stand behind it? I stand Do you behind understand it. I understand to the best of my ability. And this is where I, I stand corrected most. You understand? Um, we will never, as women, we will never tolerate Ubulawa at the hands of a lover, a, a male or whatever, because you view me a certain way and you have set the standard uh, for my life. Ubuti, yeah. You can take it. At any time you you, you wish, mm. it, it it goes. It's a deeper problem, guys. It's an economic, social. It's a socio economic complex that is not. That's not that I don't believe a hashtag like this could possibly solve. We as a society, silo We need to have a deeper conversation. What is so <coughs> profoundly wrong in your psyche that when you say you love me, you could possibly kill me, burn me? That is the kind of conversation we, I don't yeah. Uh, yeah so I don't know I don't know if you calling me trash is gonna precipitate the healthiest of but I also oh, understand that we are fucking that. angry would say we are fucking angry and we don't allow say this anymore. that the hashtag is, is you know in a way starting that talk in a way like, that's mm. the thing it's provoking conversation yeah, it's provoking the conversation you know what worries me bro? Of, yeah. yeah you know I what worries imagine, me okay, yeah, what worries me as a woman is that as a, as a black woman sitting here looking at you, I wonder if when I want to start the most profound conversation with you, calling you trash is the best way to get your attention. But I understand. I wonder if That's I the wonder. It's, a complicated, it's quite a complex diamond to look at in that sense. Yeah. Where like there's the other, there's the side which is real or the pain is real or the reality mm. of everything that's experienced on this side is real. But then you also have the way it is responded to and not that I'm not trying to control how the response happens, yes. but the in, the response is you trash. So that's going to be like, fuck the conversation. I'm building this wall and like you guys are trash too. So it's like mm. the, the intention of it starting the dialogue then immediately gets killed from the yes. way it was. Don't you agree that? This is not trying to police because... Yes, but like, as well... but you know, but you prof- get slapped in the club. Mm. It's know, always going to happen when something goes mainstream. <laughs> like, people people always read the headline and never the paragraphs underneath it. Mm. It's, yo, men not trash. Yeah, 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 yeah. S- some girl got her heart broken by some guy because she was being too fussy and, and then she gets to say men not trash, you know? Mm. Under that deep contextual thing, you, you can hang on with something so little. 
<laughs> you understand? At the same time. So that's that's where like the problem of a of the hashtag starts to to like arise and show up. And yeah. Too. And it's a it's a complicated space, Jim. Yeah. It's a complicated space. Uh also we cannot police how we as black female are bleeding. That's so thing. that process cannot yeah. be released. How um how I am expressing the profound level of hurt that I have been carrying generationally shouldn't be policed. How I position myself to precipitate a conversation with black men so that we can build isizwe sabantabamnyama is incumbent on ufundiswa, is incumbent on umbali, is incumbent on usne, is incumbent. You know what I mean? Do your bit to build this thing called black society. And if hashtag men are trash is how you feel your your best con contribution can be, we uh, and we will never shun you. But can we grow in the process is what I'm trying to say. That's why I would, I, I would never say, Wuti, I don't endorse it or I do endorse it because yeah. this, it is so complicated and I understand it on so many different layers, but I still stand. I don't know, Silo, that that is the best way to precipitate a conversation with you. But also, I, I don't know that I can allow a black man to put his hands on me one more time without fucking addressing it and not be soft <laughs> and not be palatable. Do you understand? Um, I don't want to be palatable no more. I want you to hear me. You say one more time. What? No, you said you can't allow another man to put their hands on you one, one more, more time. One more time. Ever. No. Okay, and I cool. speak of I speak of all men. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm yes. obviously putting you all under one umbrella. Saying, but you, cool. you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I cannot allow that. I cannot allow that as a black woman. And so stampe in this time and era, it requires me to be vocal in this way. The, the, the we voices, don't know. The, it's, vo it's being vocalized. <clears throat> it's happening. Right? But the fact that we are having a conversation about yeah. it is important enough. Manje, <laughs> Manje has to walk. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine that I love, that I love, just wrote, yeah, I said it. I fucking hate woke people. And I'm like, that you are one of the most woke I know. What the fuck are you saying? You know? You know, I'm you know, like, know, I, I, I don't you know, know the craziest woke people are. Do you know the craziest woke people are? Woke Christians. Ah, oh, get that's the, the fuck most, out of town. That's the most confused people in the world. Please explain. Okay, guys. I hey, used to be a woke Christian. <laughs> What's Could the you explain? The operative word. The operative word. Um, yeah, so basically, Leo, guys, for me, inside <laughs> digest, Leo, guys, we are having such a complex conversation about who we are spiritually as, 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 as black people unfolding. And I, as a, as, as a, a woman who still identifies as a, a Christian, and I'm going to be very vulnerable and honest, and I've, I've never said this outside of my family, but I think I speak for a lot of people when, when I say, Guti, I think a lot of us as black women still believe in Christianity because in case the hell gig is true. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you tell off! Right? Like, you understand? Like, I'm just no, saying, niggas. Guys, like, guys, do, uh, I do you understand? The first time I, heard about I am being honest and vulnerable <laughs> in case the hell gig is true. And, prof, I know. No, people, but I, do I you don't get, think, Do you legit no, get that shit? Thing. I legit get it. Like, I don't think, I'm not judging you when I say that because. I do believe ninety percent of people are in church because of the same thing, and sure, it might they might be so deep within the church that they've convinced themselves through the layers and layers and layers Jesus. that I'm not here because I'm afraid of hell. I'm here because I truly love God, God. and I'm not attacking Christianity <laughs> at all because because I cannot allow it. You know what I mean? But what I'm trying to say is this: we're having a complex conversation about who we are as people. Spirituality is. A huge part of it because as an African, your identity is cemented oh in your goodness. spirituality. So if I am saying to you as a, a woman who still identifies as a Christian, there are certain things about Christianity that I'm going to park right now because I want to give my cultural experience equal opportunity, right. equal fire. Do you understand? I, and that must be allowed. A God that is righteous, a God that is loving, a God that is omnipotent, omnipresent, was, is, ever will be, will understand that. That's what I believe. And I don't really have to go to church to understand that. Did you and go to church growing up? I've gone to church every single day except for the past two years. 
every single day. <laughs> oh, so every single Sunday. Sorry, oh, okay. I, I made oh, my statements. Yeah, yeah. oh, no, no, we, yeah. I, 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 I was wondering, like, when do you go to auditions? <laughs> 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 like, like, when do you, like, slick it in between, yeah, like, a Bible no, verse? No, and I endorse it, and I, I've seen how church has breathed beautiful new life into my parents. Um, and it, it complicates... Wait, did your parents it. just go start going back to church? No, they've, they've been, been Christians going all my life, church. and they continue to be, oh, and it's my, fantastic. My parents just started going to church. It's the weirdest thing. My mom like, was a for the longest Christian. time, I was the only person pushing Christianity in the house. Really? In your house? I was, I, I was, Dude, I was I thought so you told me you're a super Christian. I thought it's because, like... I do, I've done a two-week fast, bro. Oh! <laughs> The old time, you know, throwing away food. Not I used to I hide under the bed to avoid church, bro. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, like, yes. I w- guys, you know what? <laughs> if yeah, my I've got mama no tattoos, guys, if my mama listened to nothing else but maybe for some weird, crazy, serendipitous reason, she decided to, or she listened or came across this. The one thing I had wanted to actually know, which I think is a common thread amongst all our parents, is that we are not lost. Yeah, and that's would me see, not it, going to it's church. Hard, it's hard for black parents to not it's see very a creative child as not lost because you understand, <laughs> and also on top of that, also on top of that, yeah, oh, I'm so to your pen. How do you understand? Yeah, well, so this, yeah, well, you, you don't understand, <laughs> you don't fit in the box. Mm. Yeah, well, <laughs> Others before you have fit in perfectly fine. But when are you you the circle for the square hole? What if I challenge? What if I challenge something? I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be general. I'm listening. I'm be general on purpose. What if we, as this young black youth that are alive in this time, are the manifestation of our parents' biggest fears and the things that they. S- wanted to suppress so badly, could not Jeez. express, could not explore the parts of themselves that were forbidden to explore. That's beautiful. Right? <laughs> That's scary. And no, exactly, that is. for evolution, it must be because you must, and that fear must be overcome. And I have had to wrestle with this in my own mind that maybe I am the part of, I am the most vulnerable part of my mother. The deepest fear coming true, that, which... Uh, is necessary for this time. Ooh. Okay, cool. So we have individual consciousness, which means we, as an individual, you embody the fears yeah, of your can. parents. Yes. Then we have, as a generation, the general spirit, and I hate using the word general because yeah? no, no, it's okay. You can't represent everybody. Yes. You no know, one person Correct. can, but we can say there is a dominant idea based yes, on the and internet. a collective experience. So then, where would we? What insecurity has been? Ex- okay, what body has been expressed then through this current generation? <laughs> I w- yeah. So I wish I had answers. Angaz. Angazi, I can only make my own conclusions. When I talk about me manifesting as uh, and me, possibly you, possibly, I don't know what your individual experience is, manifesting as possibly your parents' most suppressed worst fear, but the part of themselves that is necessary to be overcome through you. Okay? That I completely get. <laughs> but then, Prof, I, I have a bit of a fear, and um, I'm a mother. Yes. So and you're looking at your daughter like... How do you impart... It is a daughter, no? That, that part of it is difficult, because I, then I say... Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. there we go. I, I, I read something recently. I think it might have been Credo Mutu, to attest to what you're saying. Guys, we live in an entire physical, spiritual, <coughs> cosmic experience. That is a fact of life, whether we acknowledge that or not. And I read this, and Tiwa, even the of the evolution of the vi- no, it wasn't Credo actually. There was someone else. It was another beautiful indigenous. Uh, it, what uh, what I don't know what the politically correct name is for Red Indians. What are indigenous? Native, Native Americans. Americans. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. The ones who were there first. First, the, the natives. <laughs> please can edit the Red Indians part out, obviously. <laughs> 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 no, we've schooled you now. You did not know. <laughs> hey, really? Thank you. No, I'm just actually thinking about the name Red Indians. Yes. Oh, like why <laughs> were they like? like <laughs> okay, cool. The yeah. Native American. Uh, there was a na- Native American lady. The evolution of the soil is even dependent on you consuming that plant in certain measure, as African principle, African agricultural governing principles would tell you, because that's who our forefathers were as well 
they were tillers of the soil, they were farmers, but they had a cosmic understanding of the soil. Which how do I use it? How do I harvest it? Because its evolution is dependent on how I consume it now, which is when we have things like corporates coming and wiping out entire forests. People that are not even having conversation with the soil. And I know people will take me on some, oh my God, that actress Hibber Jibber shit. She's on that <laughs> weird shit. No, I'm on that factual shit. I'm on the fact that the environment is changing shit. I'm on the fact that I'm intrinsically aware that my daughter will get to live in a physically different environment than me. The Durban that I speak of now, these beautiful summer nights, will be foreign to her. That is how deep the shit is. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So yes, it's packaged in environmental change and sustainability. My forefathers <laughs> used to call it balance. Uklonipa impilo. Uklonipa nature. And everything that it has to provide for me. I must have intrinsic knowledge of it. I must know my herbs. Shut up, Mendoza. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Black boy. I'd like to challenge when you're talking about like, your children being born <laughs> with the, the fears. Is like actually no, it's wild. good, man. We need comic relief. Everybody. No, we do, guys. <laughs> because I get deep and heavy fast. No, James, please. Yeah, no, we do. I love it. I love <laughs> it. It's my, it's it's my brother. Don't worry. Yeah. So, for me, the idea... Okay, I love the idea that Earth will give birth to the people it feels unnecessary to create balance. You think so? What? Can you please repeat that? I did okay, not hear let me that. Say, the universe will give birth. Okay. It's Lungu. The yeah. universe will give birth to the people that are necessary for balance to be achieved. Oh, uh, okay. And I genuinely do believe that that is constantly happening. But we also live in a system that makes it harder for what your purpose that you were born to do as a black person as a black we mm -hmm. must repeat but that I'm saying it regardless is, of yeah. race mm -hmm. like the reality is like you have these white kids born into rich homes and they're supposed to take over the dad's corporate company and they decide to take all that money and i'm like i'm going to focus on being a positive impact in the world so even they on a vibrational level are also being born into this like to like okay cool we need to make a change like you mm. yeah it was like so there's collective awareness that something needs to change, whether you're black, white, purple, or green. Yes, so this is what yes. you're saying. There is, a, there is definitely a collective consciousness about that. So we are aware that we are aware. Not that we, I'm not saying we're doing anything about it because sometimes I'm going to inherit, let's say my white kid, I'm going to inherit daddy's Steinhomf. Um, I'm going to either choose to carry that on or not. But what we're saying is that at least I am aware yeah, I'm going to struggle, choose to be part struggle, of the solution or not. Yeah, in fact, you understand. Yeah. But I think capitalism mm -hmm. is like the only, it's the only thing we know right now, capitalism. And it's also <laughs> the main cause of the problems where, yeah. okay, so there's this AI, all yeah. these AI algorithms that are created yes. and shit. So, we had, again, there's this thing I was reading where so it's two AIs and they're playing a game is against each other, right? So the guys who created the game, like, okay, they put a thing in place where one of the ga one of the AIs can sabotage the other player. Oh, shit, I And saw because that. the goal is to win the game, the other AI started sabotaging the other player. So Without being taught. Uh, yeah, without being taught. It's hard to sabotage. So these are just algorithms. Stop and, and get out of town. Yeah. But this <laughs> this is well, this is what's create what I what I took from this from what they're experimenting with, with their ones and zeros, is that humans for me are intrinsically good people. Yes. They genuinely care. But place them in a system where they constantly have to find a way to win because that's the only way they're going to survive. They will resort to sabotaging other people and doing do what so. results negatively for other people in order for them to move forward. Mm. So, so then I, then capitalism in that way wait. is essentially that but system. Then, then, then we also as actually can't then go... Because then it, this makes me have a myriad of, compli of, of questions. Not, they might, might not be complicated. Then I say... Why did a, and I'm going to take it here, guys, and I, this conversation is necessary. What is it about a white person that has felt so threatened that they would create a system like that in order to thrive? Because we know that 
apartheid, racism, intrinsically is. I am on survival mode. I am threatened to the very core and I will react. So we need to go back to the genesis of why le cancer or yona or yona. We need to get to the bottom of that because we can't live like that. We can't live on constant I am you know what I mean? Constantly putting up a wall and rebutting something like, and, and that that's become systematic, a systematic cancer that I'm even born with. No, something needs to give. And so we're saying, inking like inking. I don't know if I regress or, I, I, but I, I need our minds to go there because so much of our problems are because of white systems that have put been put into place. Yeah, that are outdoored to a black person. Let's just be honest about that. But I see collapse, guys. What is what is the, actually the second question? Because <laughs> like I, I think we just started speaking. <laughs> let's let's talk about Bella Rose Nomaswas. Yes. Your how's, how's, how's motherhood? Profound. Life changing. Uh, uh, do you mind sharing how she came into the world? Not at all. So I dated this guy. Oh my god. I met this guy at church. Oh my. So I met this guy and I didn't meet this at guy. At church? You met him just two years ago. Methodist church. Oh. Mind. Wesley, 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 one way. Wesley, no, one heart. Keeping, um, one heart. One way. Thank you. One way. Hands, wait, one I, hands, I, one I way. just want to keep track of the timeline. So this was two years ago. Ne? No, this was oh, over five years ago now. Is that how old she? How old she? She's turning six this year. Ooh. Yeah. So was like, wow. this? Nonetheless, uh, my sister's like, oh my God, there's this guy at church. Oh my god, some dal. <laughs> my sisters are like, there's this. I mean, I'm in Cape Town. There's this guy at church. Maybe you should meet him. He's a single dad. He's really, really cute. And I'm like, I'm all the way in Cape Town. I'm not interested in your rubbish. Blah, blah, blah. We carry on. I come back. They arrange it. At the oh snap! He lived in Cape Town. We'll get back to that. Yeah, no, we'll get back to that. And then, cut a long story short, I met this guy eventually. We went on a on this blind date. It was awkward at first, and this is a conversation for another day. But already spiritually, something was telling me. Something's up. Something's up. Run but nonetheless, I went along with it. Dated this guy who had a very um, cool but sometimes tumultuous seven-month relationship. And then, like as great as it was, I knew that that's not the person I'm meant to be with. So we, so I kind of ghosted him, and I called it quits and stuff. And I uh, so like, pause, pause, <laughs> pause. <laughs> you ghosted him. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> so like why are you rushing past the so, story no, no I just want to know how the ghosting happened <laughs> yeah. It yeah. Was like, so you slowly stopped communicating no to never him. I didn't it was instant Oh wow! So yeah, no, went, no, I am a So you went to just bought a new SIM card, contacted yes. your mom, dad. <laughs> oh wow! The number you have dialed does not exist. That's how far. Did you just tell your mom about the new SIM card? Hey, there's yeah. levels to ghosting, you know. So I went full on. Whatever the highest level there is, I am like the so cheapest you like signed of signed a new lease. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm about that. And so, yeah. Okay, like, we so can proceed, guys. Who is that? Oh God, who's name? This poor guy. So yeah, Did you so ever they check on his Facebook just to see how he's no, doing. No, never. I blocked everything. <laughs> I ghosted. I blocked. I deleted. I yeah. So then Did I go. Tell I, him. Is this the baby daddy, by the way? Yes, this is Bella. Did Rose's you tell father. him there was a baby after this? So this is this is now no, how man, we get to we, Bella. Why is Dougie's always afraid of confrontation? I don't know. No, because like for me, as I'm getting older, yeah. I'm trying. I'm. It's a conscious effort to try to learn to be more confrontational. And I think and it was it's yeah. Like, always like. And it was oh like, no, confrontation takes like a lot of energy, dog. Mm. Yeah, I but the thing, the reality is, I'm like, I'm more likely, okay, you're dating a white girl, she wants to yeah. break up, she'll let you know. Yeah. You're dating a black girl and you guys just might drift apart, even though you guys either. both wanted to break up, but, but nobody wanted yeah, to say anything because we're too afraid to have confrontation. You know what and it is, bro? <laughs> you know what I think it is? Uh, it's not so much that I was scared of confrontation. I was not at a part in my journey where I was evolved enough to know that a, a man and a woman can have a mature conversation, it can go well, or it could not go well, and it's not the end of the world. So that's what, what I, I did. I, I did. I did not have the maturity at the time. Yes, I'm so Here's my question. Then, um, what are you doing to ensure that your daughter knows what you didn't know at that early age? I journal for her as much as I can. 
For I her. journal. Yeah, I journal. I journal. I keep a journal of my thoughts. These are thoughts that are not imposed on me. These are my life experiences. Read about them. Maybe one or two lines mean something. Maybe it doesn't. But this was my take of my experience. It is important for us as black people to write, to document for our kids. Have you backed that up on the cloud? <laughs> please help me. Oh, please help me now. Because your house could burn down. Eh? All your hard work is gone. Please help like, me. Black, just, black house servers coming soon. I do not even know what, <laughs> guys. Once a year. <laughs> you got like, you gotta help me, guys. Yeah, so please help me through that uh, technological retard. So, yeah, so, yeah, so it's important for me. Upele Rose basically comes about like that. I, I break up with this guy, I ghost him. And then a s- couple of months later, I discover I'm pregnant. And they could only, oh, uh, it could, ah, uh, oh my God. Never thinking, never thinking, never thinking. Who's the first person you told that you so were pregnant? So you had, did you, so wait, hold on. You, oh. had, to, you had to unghost him. Um, I first had to deal with the reality of pregnancy. And yes, I had to unghost and everything. And I remember I was in the car. He was not the first person I told. Who was the first person you told? A very know. close person. A uh, friend of mine called Upemlis Todd. I, I was very close to her at the time, yeah. and she she was she's a Christian woman, and her and her then boyfriend, now husband, had just fallen Shoot. pregnant outside of marriage. So I felt that because what that year was this? This was twenty twelve. Okay, cool. Twenty twelve. So I, I I felt like because Pamela had gone through that kind of situation, she was a safe space for me. So if a, if a Christian can fall into this kind of situation. It We're like still it Christian then, like heavily Christian. Of course, yes. Of course, yes. Um, but then, yes, of course, yes. <clears throat> so then I went I and I told Pamela today. and then I had to call Andile and tell him and then I went and I parked my car somewhere and I called him and I was like, where are you? Turn the car around. You need to come here. It's urgent. He came to wherever I was um, and I was like, he was like, hi, hi. I've been trying to, I, and I'm like, yeah, I know. Uh, listen, I'm pregnant. And then he just looked at me and he said, I know that baby's mine. I know That's that baby's so mine. Though. Yeah, right? But it, it, no, 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 it, it is totally mm. I mean, very yeah, from a chick flicky type of way. Ah! I'm just thinking of it, it as a guy. Um, like, um, you you keep keep it? Like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, he didn't, he did, and, 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 and I love that Sounds he did not question. Sounds like a really nice guy. <laughs> okay, let me know. He like, was a church guy. <laughs> they did say he was a church guy. <laughs> no, but he's not, but like, there was something off, but he was a church guy. A lot of church guys would want to run. You know, like, oh man, I thought this yeah. was just gonna be for fun, yeah. and she even ghosted me. Now she's coming back saying, "In fact, I want to get a paternity good test." Good church guys you know. exist. Yeah. No, I'm not saying no. They good don't, black men exist. Let's yeah. just be honest. Let's and as well, remember, this was not Andile's first. Uh, this was Andile's now second baby that was not planned. So there was also a level of panic. But because I think he was, uh, I think about three years or four years older than me, there was a level of calm as well. So nonetheless, upela upela wa I'm not gonna lie. It was it was tumultuous. Soon after that, soon after that, you know, so that moment, in that moment, it was like, oh my gosh, we're okay, we're gonna make it, okay, cool. It, w- it was tumultuous, and maybe one day I'll, I'll write a book about about that kind of pain, but it was painful and growing and maturing as well. It was a, a, a complicated, up until um, and then okay. we had an amazing co parenting relationship until he passed away. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah it's man. all good, it's all good. Um, we ha- so much stronger, so much stronger. So, since you've become a mother, how yeah. much, how has that changed your the drive that you have for your career? Your amazing, am- um- amazing <laughs> career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, actually we actually haven't dived into it. We haven't it's even gone into that. It, uh, Bella, having Bella Rose has changed everything. The reason. It is that she is now the reason. So I'm autonomous, but also she's an external reason I have. Like someone's got to eat outside of me. So I got to work harder. Do you understand? Like basic logistics. My mom and dad are like, ah, yeah, yeah. Sex before marriage is exactly. So now let's let's work, honey. So yeah, um, an amazing reason. A good enough reason. A worthy reason. Yeah. Bella's everything. Bella's everything. Bella is. I think parenting is something else. Yeah. It I'm, is. I'm terrified of having kids. Hey, you, uh, fuck them kids. You. you can't give them back. <laughs> no, I'm like, <laughs> fuck them kids. Fuck, them. fuck them. them kids. No, but it's like the idea of, like, this is a whole human being, man. It like, is. it's it's terrifying. It is scary. And, and I'm, I'm yeah, sure you still, have, you still have moments of realization. Like, yeah, 
there's this thing this thing that's walking around in my house say the moon. freakiest <laughs> thing i'm not lying to you is when you and i think I, I saw like a facebook thing about it as well and i'm like oh, that's so weird they articulated exactly what I, I wanted to say the freakiest thing is when your child starts dip- displaying who you are to you yeah but the thing is a sponge so it's just yeah, looking and taking everything thing so what is your is child like acting t- as you <laughs> yes and it's kind of like scary and shit but because <laughs> it's weird but because it's also autonomous and i i said this to a friend it's genetically recently. written inside you like if i live so there's a lot of looking and then it gets activated inside it's all oh, this one okay what's in <laughs> yeah, no, your mama? No, papa do you understand and also a lot of her father's mannerisms which is weird because they only got to spend two years together and I'm like, it's genetic. Uh, and in it, oh, yeah, oh, what, oh my God. What a, kind of long story short. I said this to a friend recently. I feel Mike. like Bella Rose is me walking backwards. That's what I feel like. I feel like I see myself and I'm walking backwards into my life. And here I am in the physical, getting older. But I'm happy with what I, as I take those final, well, not, I'm fuck final, what? As I take my <laughs> prime. Touch the wood next steps. to you. <laughs> Making Send it sound like you're 80 Touch years old in your deathbed right the now. Fuck <laughs> am I, I sound like my mom. I am not taking no final fucking you see, steps. You're doing the exact no, no, same on, thing no. to your mom, what see, you, your daughter does. Now she's fighting this line. <laughs> this line of I'm becoming my mother. No, yeah. I'm still a daughter. No, I'm but I'm a mother. But <laughs> but, 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 but. <laughs> fuck them kids. <laughs> She's going to wake up next year and say, I am become my mom. <laughs> I am my fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Today I was speaking on the phone with my mother. And because of just like, I'm, I'm in love with myself in the skin. Tone. I mean, I was like, mom, you don't, I never understand this. They took a whole lot of shit. And, and I was like, oh my God, I'm speaking. Do you remember Kanyezi? <laughs> oh shit, mom. Shut on Kanyezi. Um... <laughs> Put this PA next door to us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I could never afford her in my dreams. But anyway, well done. Welcome, Ka. But anyway, back to the question at hand, gentlemen. So mother, that's how Bella was conceived, right? The the only time in my life I had unprotected sex, I must say, I felt pregnant. Never thinking that I would. Never thinking that. I don't know why. And the first thing my mother said to me when I said, Mom, I'm pregnant because Bella started complicating and showing signs of miscarrying. I said, I'm pregnant. And she's like, ah, Kanja, Nick, like, you're so smart. How are you pregnant? <laughs> that was my mom's reaction. Oh, and then the she went and pulled her eyes out, of course. Oh, it's the quiet ones. <laughs> it's the quiet, it's the head girls. You see these head girls? Yeah, oh, you fucking Kids don't girls. have aspirations like this. Listen. Oh, head can love a baby meat. Listen. It's so, always yeah. these Catholic girls. It's these good ones, though. So yeah, that's been me. That's been motherhood. What is my policy on motherhood, o- on parenthood in general? Absolute honesty. Absolute honesty Absolute. in increments that a five-year-old can understand. Okay, the, cool. Yeah. 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 I was gonna say absolute. I was gonna like hold yeah. up. <laughs> in increments that inganyako ikula at that they can understand at that time. Yeah. Um, uh, absolute honesty, but also consideration, obviously, with w- with how they take in information like that and love. That, that is the only way I know how to parent. I have not been perfect at it. I've been, I feel like I'm getting it wrong most of the time. And I'm like, oh my God, she's going to see a shrink. Ah. <laughs> no, no, you know no, 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 like, no, no. Hold on, hold on. There's no way you cannot traumatize the children. Yeah. Your, you it's like literally, yeah, I guess. even if you, if you like, okay, every single thing perfect as per request from the child that you heard from before they were born, etc you will still traumatize your child. It is impossible not to traumatize your child. In some way or and another. Like, the reality is, you like you are dealing with trauma that you've had from your parents, and you're like, Mom, why were they so... You're like, mm. But regardless of how perfect your life is, like you will still have trauma. And even just reenacting what your parents did to you and you're doing certain things, like that's automatic when you have kids. Like You, you just like go into that moment mm. where now you're no longer the kid, you're the adult, and like, oh, shit, no one... <laughs> Like, 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 yeah, like, <laughs> my, yeah, like my, ah, my mom, like my, like, like my mama. But I have to say, if I, if I ended up exactly like my mom, I would have achieved it anyway. Fact. I don't know because to keep a family, a marriage together, to see the seasons. That yeah, but it was a different seen. time though. Like it was, yeah, it was part of the thing. survival you, of you the don't time. Know whether you would no, or not. I say that in absolute honesty. 
I have analyzed my mother. I have analyzed her character. And besides those factors of eh, big, fight me, big, 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 mother Uma has modeled what love is to me. Well, would you say you've analyzed yourself as deeply as you've analyzed your mother? Yes, if not deeper and harsher with myself. Exactly, harsher. It's hard to be objective with yourself. You know, mm. it's like so you might you might think you're not good at something, but you're just being overly harsh. Whereas the next person next to you is absolutely fucking horrible at that thing. You know, mm. so like it's hard. Like you, it, you do it. I find I do it probably through friends, yeah. just like weighing how different friends and filtering out the biases on you. You know, uh. so it's like it's hard. To, it's being harsh on yourself is, is easy. Yeah. So does. I'm just, I'm just asking, in terms of the narrative of how you perceive your mother, does it help you in terms of pushing for everything that you want to accomplish? Is it like is it a story that you need to a motivation? Yes, yeah, is, is, is it part of your motivation? Um, I, I've achieved everything I think is humanly possible for a child to achieve to make their parents happy. Now it's about this is who I am, and. I want you to die smiling regardless of what this looks like. And I am reconciled if the end days come and you are not necessarily happy, but at least you're proud. I'm, uh, it, Hi guys, the burden uh, of pleasing parents. Guys. Are, yes. 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 I I I think that I've made them proud to the best of my ability. I've tried and I've Yo, tried you got you got like four point five million viewers a day. Do you understand? Like, you day, like you. Fuck, I'm gonna get Saying, to you. Amen. Yes. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> Can, Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? I think we should speak about I, your I, acting I think, now. I think they're proud. <laughs> I think they're proud. I mean, like, come on. Like I'm sure it's like nine. 30 and a half guests over. It's like, yes, it's like you a, just turn on the TV. Yes. 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 And as well, I'm, I'm trusting that this is, yeah, I'm trusting that this has given them the return on the investment. They've invested heavily in me. And when we're sitting at four and a half million and I'm giving us consistently okay performance, I hope they're proud. You say okay. Because <laughs> I will be able to. No, no, I just want to check something. That's all. That's, I want to check all that. Yo, yo, yo. Black house. I can't hear myself. Yo, I right, cool. Black house. Black house. Black house. Black house. Talk. Black house. Talk to me. Black house. Talk, talk, talk. Black house. Black house. Black house. Black house. Black house. Black house. Welcome back. So we're back on. We're back on. We're back on. I think that'll be part of our gimmick. We're just gonna plug in the looper every time. Oh gosh. It sounds dope as it happened by accident. <laughs> like all great things. Yes. <laughs> we're back. We're back in it. Not back. Is your camera back in life? Say hi to the camera. Wait to the camera. This one, not that one. Yeah. Why you? Why you? I gotta take it. They come on like come on. Why you? Because I am single and I'm ready to mingle. Bobu taba chala kovi on. Is that an announcement to the world? Three, five, two. Lele, like, listen. I'm not married. My parents are so worried about me. So like, someone just found me. Anyway, right. we are back at the <laughs> <laughs> The fuck? I'm just being honest, guys. Uh, okay, cool. Thank you. Right, cool. Yeah. All right, so career-wise. Yes. From generations. <laughs> oh, gosh. Why, why? Yes, my first breakthrough role in the industry, I was fairly young. Um, work that I'm very, very proud of. Uh, it made the relevant sort of noise for me, I think, at the time. Wait, before, before your breakthrough, please let the other people know what happened before then, because I, I feel like the, there's a lot of them who just think it just happens overnight. No. no. <laughs> Can it's not you just possible. break it down? Maybe two, three, four, five years before? How, then, how long was yeah, the journey before no, then? Yeah, so I think I graduated three, so I graduated in 2006. I can't remember what when my, when my <coughs> first role was on Generations in which year that was. But like I was fairly young, but I was working 
in a clothing store in Cape Town. Which one? It was called Monsoon, and they would. Uh, we're not supposed to market people. Here. We're not supposed to. Yeah, yeah so I was like, a, 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 it was a, yeah. It was called da 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 da. Nonetheless, that's where I was working. I was doing that. I was to, to pay the bills because my parents were like, "You got to make your own way now." And I was going to auditions, and that's how I lived. And I remember one of the f- proudest SMSs I've ever sent was I was sitting at Oar Tambo International, and I resigned because. From. It didn't make yeah. sense anymore for you. <laughs> it didn't make sense anymore. Was this from the and clothing store? Yes, from the clothing store. Yeah. And my God, I beat the black narrative. So what, um, did yeah. you start booking gigs like immediately after? Um, well, no, I first had to go to work. I went to Generations and I was a shooter, a shooter, a shooter. When my episode started TXing, that's when I started booking work and <coughs> additional income started coming in. And I had to start being innovative about being a business, which is how I sit here today so it was the building blocks of everything generations for me gang uh, nine but it smartened me toughened me up it you know what i mean it prepared me for the industry uh not i, I, I had my first psychological meltdown and i was heaving in mom connie ferguson's room and she was like it's okay it's okay i was like they are calling me a name that's not even mine i don't even know who Rita Villa is what? and she was like it's okay <laughs> like psychologically conditioning for me uh, conditioning me would say okay so audiences don't know any better and you need to understand so you know how you dealt with this in film school this is now its reality which is why I believe with I believe in being gracious with the young actors that are coming up. Wait, so just Ooh, so sorry, yeah. You had a meltdown because <coughs> yes. everybody was calling you Rita Ville, and you felt <coughs> you're trapped in the soapy characters. Yes, <laughs> like <laughs> expectation. This. I didn't even know what that meant. Like, why are they even calling me that? For those who don't know me, like, why? Why are they even? And then she had to break it down to me. So you, so you see this going on on different channels growing up, like obviously because you want to be an actor, yeah. but the lived experience is completely overwhelming and you different. You forgot that you're just doing a job. You forgot that um, he, you're just yeah. acting because it got real. Yeah. It got, it got real. real. Like, it's like, what is a student village or what, what, what's that <clears throat> place How in famous Oakland did you Park? get that first time? Going from like normal fundi. It was crazy. To your, it first, was crazy. your first couple of TX. I'm sure a month. It was crazy. A month, like yes, it was crazy. It was like within the first week, the fire. This I'm this I'm this girl who was a model for black excellence. Cause like listen, cause you know you've read the profile, head girl, this that. So the expectation on me was always high. So when I was in Cape Town selling clothes at a clothing store. I was like, what the hell is going on? My life is not supposed to be done like this. So, you know what I mean? Like these conversations, like I'm quite smart. What the fuck? But um, so yeah, so that moment was profound and the fire spread like crazy. I'm a small girl. I'm a girl from a small town. Yeah. Word got out fast. Like, it was Facebook. It was like everybody could communicate on Facebook now. So it got out fast and the support was overwhelming and beautiful. That's it. That was Generations. Generations was fantastic. I was still charter, charting my way and I brought a beautiful discipline to my craft even at that age, I believe. Yeah. Well, I just want to talk about the level of trauma <laughs> that yeah. people experience when... Okay, so you have high hopes. Yes. You leave high school of varsity. Right? Oh, hey. you're you gonna marry the guy that you're dating in matric. You're Hi, gonna buy him on my house. You're going to have hey. goals to be a lawyer hey. by twenty five. Yes. <laughs> so many others failed, but you're, of you are course, unique. And of course, he's going to <laughs> propose to you by the age of twenty six, and you guys are gonna get married at the church with Pastor Kevin. As you can clearly see, goals yeah, between we men and women are very different. Yeah, guys <laughs> are like, I'm going to be a millionaire at 26 and I'm going to fuck these no, bitches. No, exactly. So. No, no, we're married and you're one kid down, <laughs> asshole. Actually, you're the asshole marriage, and bitch. I honestly you know? believe that there should be free therapy for everybody who reaches the age of 25. Yeah. And also when you get to the age of 30, maybe even 32. <laughs> oh, wow. I think they, that they is a beautiful be a innovation, actually. Because like, one, you be get to 25 beneficial. and you realize like, oh, wow, there's so many things I have to mourn, I have to let go of because I won't be able to accomplish them. And then you get a 30 or 32 or whatever and then you realize there's more things to mourn. <laughs> yeah. That sounds <laughs> My stomach. Amazing for what like, like yeah anyway cool now. I was, that was just a sidetrack well <laughs> a on. profound one a necessary one <laughs> yeah so Nyang you're also focus. a creator yeah, check if you're still in focus okay. 
I am also a creator prof, yes. Oh, oh. Just waiting for Zilo to get back in my mic. This is fun. This is fun. This is awesome. Fun. This is exactly how I envisioned it would be, but better. <laughs> but better. I did not, but I didn't think this. This is just a <laughs> This is the craziest. I'm trying to get comfortable with these headphones, Zilo. Okay, yeah, there we go. Are you comfortable? I'm okay. good now. Speak, speak. One, two, three. Okay, cool. You're still good, right? We still good. She still sounds She's amazing. Still All right, cool. You've created shows. I have. Let's talk about that. I, um, that is synonymous to Wait, you've given it's, birth. It's for life. Yeah. It's, it's for life. For life. Oh, it has Ooh. a song. <laughs> don't sing too many song. lyrics. You know, you Please, though, guys, I'm the royalties the for world. these things. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. It's about for birth. It's for life. It's for life. First production uh, I ever co-created with some friends that I went to varsity with. It was quite crazy to, to go from being, you know what I mean, like a student to creating a live jive show that gets live jive bought by a live jive broadcaster. So it was a, yeah, it was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. It sounds pretty So epic. I knew that, I knew that I was capable of creating something. Um, and so I went about creating that business relationship, obviously, um, it, it took on a different form or whatever, but I knew that I was capable of creating. That's what is for life taught me. Creating beyond just characters and performances. It's just what yes. do you mean when you say creating creating an experience <coughs> creating a, a an experience for the person who's decoding the information that I've encoded. I've encoded this magic in poetry, in words, in a safety awareness campaign, and I've encoded the magic in whatever language that I believe your employer has said you understand. And when you experience this thing for the first time and your, your mind is umkiza sitting there, yeah. a factory worker, seeing the, the characters that he knows and he makes that connections. And he makes those connections in his brain. And I use this form called theater. That's what I mean. When I, when I make, when I precipitate that moment where you connect with a body of work, <coughs> not just in an intellectual way, but in a way that, that is emotional. Yeah. That's what I mean when I say I'm a content creator. I believe that's what you're, I mean. You're a content creator, I was going to say that. So you <laughs> said it at the end. For me, <laughs> yeah. I, okay, from my perspective, I believe that your purpose as a human being is all about creation. Mm. That if you're not involved in some form of creation, that I think it's going to be hard to find real meaning within your life. Mm. I concur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. comrades in <laughs> deep ways. Yeah. In you, deep can ways. Say so. you can drop a punchline just to uh, I'm not alleviate. <laughs> <laughs> that is deep, man. That, that is, is profound. That is rooted. With yeah. your DR. See how that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it, yeah. yesterday you briefly, okay, obviously people weren't listening because we weren't recording. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Industrial theater mm. as i said i picture in my head a bunch of people in a warehouse Imagine. acting in gumboots <laughs> so oh at least in this go, it, you know i, I would just i want to say you know what that is the equivalent of this the level this the level of insults this inferior knowledge that you have here <laughs> i shall come and educate thee <laughs> Inferior, <laughs> inferiority knowledge. Yes, yes, yes it, it, It's like <laughs> me saying that the DOPs just press record. Hey, Howard, Apple, you guys just press record. What the hell? Are, do you understand? It, it, and I understand that they you... also move the camera. <laughs> I mean, just a little, you and know. They don't even touch focus. They have focus pullers for that. For yeah, them, I like, what do you do? Like, I don't <laughs> What's your job? Um, I'm so playing. I'm playing. <laughs> oh, no cutting all of that. <laughs> oh my god! I'm so what? not cutting. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't cut. It's not that serious. Wedding photographers can do it. It's so open. Nonetheless, okay. w- what was the question again? Oh my god! Industrial theatre. <laughs> it's my business. So yeah, how I feed my child. Yes, industrial theatre is that. Um, we are not. Exp- you are only able to achieve as much as you are exposed to. I am grateful for my parents for investing in me so that I can go to the schools that I went to to have the exposure I had. My first job in the industry was an industrial theater gig. And little did I know that those were my ancestors encoding the first 
sort of uh, manifest the things that would manifest later because I was there to learn more than to act. <coughs> So the, so yeah, so that's how I went into industrial theatre and came into contact with it until one day I realized when we were hired by an oil company that I'm capable of doing this thing, not just being an actress, so like just do it. Because my dad had instilled in us business bar- how bravery. Was the, how, was how was the check? How was that? That check. Healthy. <laughs> how many <laughs> siblings do you have? Say, say that again. Siblings. Three. Three, what? Oh, no, no, three. No brothers. No, I I I must be I must be honest. So so from my mom and dad, there's three there's four four of us all together. So I've got three siblings. Then I've got a brother called Uncle Luleg who's unfortunately in jail. I've also got a, a sister called Undogoza. Yeah, yeah. So that's those are my siblings from my dad from my dad's side, sad side. Yeah. So that's us. But yeah. So smooth. But the four siblings from Isisuskama are who I'm closest to. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So many of them are involved in business as well. Then all of us. Wow, okay. All That's of us. Key, man. Yeah. You have got <coughs> two options. You uh, can go and get a nine to five and be in business or be in business. So that's how we were raised. Yeah. That was the option on the table. Um, well, especially, okay, with, yeah, see, I just had like a bunch of thoughts which I didn't say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with the okay, bad. what we got? No, no, it was like, just you, so you're thinking, you're thinking, and then you start speaking here. And you're like, but what about these sentences? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Whereas, like, business, I think business and freelancing, for me, I think it's quite a spiritual act in the sense yeah, that it it's is. it's constant faith. Like, this, what, mm. next year is not guaranteed. Or next fact, month. Next month is not guaranteed. Next, next week, understand. Even, you know, it's like, what are we oh, talking cool, about? Yeah. It's like, I think it's quite a spiritual thing to it be is. like, yo, I left my full-time job to go pursue this career and in order to maximize my ability to grow, I'm going to freelance. Cause mm. Making nice money too. Your parents think you're no, crazy. But here's the thing where it's like somebody out there right now has lost their job today. Yeah. Somebody out there has lost their job last year and they still haven't found another one and they're panicking the heck as to what to do. You chose to get rid of a job and yeah. trusted that everything that's necessary will fall into place and somehow it keeps falling into place and it's not all you but somehow every single time you have found yourself a way not to end up back at mom can i come back to my old room that sometimes that happens spiritual. yeah and that too is okay sometimes that happens but and it's I, okay i'm but loving how guys we are we are we all we are doing here the three of us is articulating the black experience. Sometimes in my life, it's looked like what Prof is describing. Yeah. A lot of times it's looked like what you're describing. Where it's sometimes it's back at mama, la lela. The long tintita as I get back up. Sometimes it's mama, la lela, iwalet nyana. Do you understand? <laughs> and it and feels I'm not good going to, to send money home. I'm, uh, yeah, it, it's, it feels amazing. And I'm not going to say sometimes you're lucky because luck invalidates the work of those who work hard. There's no such thing as luck. You make. Do you understand? Luck. You make your own luck. So for me, it's like mother. Yes, yes, yes. It's a random. It's a random occurrence that you cannot quantify or even begin to try forecast. Jan. How? How? <laughs> Outside of me How working hard. How you forecast luck? Huh? You can't forecast luck. It's a bug. Say Julie. Say Julie. Let's not even get into this. We're so unanimous. This luck. This luck. Moving on. So, but that's what I'm saying. So, like, it's we just articulating the the lived experience of. See old Ducky, Abakula in this time and age. Do you understand? It looks different. There is no one to say this is right, this is wrong. You guy working at Co Price Waterhouse and you speak like this and you gotta carry it up your ass. You are the best version of what success is. Fuck you. Sometimes the best version of success is the fact yeah, that I risked it all. But no, bro. Yeah, no, no bro. Like um, um yeah, yeah the, see, I'm going I'm going and, and, and like Ungwen and Avumole. If you dropped all that isn't you. And I'm, I, it, it, we are so colonized that I even had to say that to you in English for you to get that when <laughs> Fucked up. Anyway, <laughs> what is the next question? <laughs> <laughs> so fucked up. So why fucked up. Why are you hating on the Model C's, though? Hey? Why are you hating on the Model C's? Um, uh, because you used to be a Model C. I, of course, and it <clears throat> it's worrisome. No, but it, you still have your Zulu, though. Not enough of it, too. Don't come to your side. <laughs> <It'll swallow. laughs> I I don't I'm not hating on the model C. I see how the system is so conducive to 
the model C is the problem, not the solution. It's part of the problem. It's structure. It's system. It's it it, it yeah. It, it it continues to break the tongue, break my tongue, and it continues to subconsciously instill whiteness as excellence. Hence, I speak like this. Silo, you know what I would love right I, now. I, I, I a, like for me, I, I I also went to similar schools. Yeah, Posh, yeah, what, what? Like, I know that because you've got the brainwash. stamp. The stamp is the accent <laughs> that you speak in. <laughs> there's a brainwash that happens where you think you're part of this brotherhood, oh, whatever, a sisterhood, oh, 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 boom. Yeah. Then there's this thing that happens, and it happens to every single model C and person with yeah. the stamp who speaks yes. like me, who speaks like you, is you realize what you'll never be part of, part of them or one of them as the white people or Indians or whatever race yeah, you you're not black enough you're, you're not black enough. enough no white enough ever ever they'll always they'll, you'll always be reminded of the color of your skin and, and you have to make a choice from there Woody. do I continue being the idiot because it serves me well or do I break out and, yeah. fall, and if you, all of you yeah. be a yeah. proper yeah. black <laughs> you know what Town, makes me yeah? you know what, what? I'm, you're talking about Cape Town yeah. aren't you oh no that, this happened this happened after Cape Town yeah. actually funny yeah. when I got back here yeah. And I, I wasn't just, why am I speaking so much English like around all these black, why, do, why? I'm the wrong one because I'm the only one speaking this much English here. <laughs> so you only experienced that as an adult? Yeah. Are you lucky? Yeah, I also yeah. experienced it. I, I had to unlearn so, so much. As an adult as well. Uh, well. So wait, am no, I the I only know, one I who's got the trauma quite early. from yeah. speaking English as a young person? Say that again. Am Ooh. I the only one here who's carrying trauma from speaking English as a single digit human being? in terms of being nine years old. <laughs> no, it, it worked for the system for me. Mm. Like, you speak some English, oh, you're so smart, you speak like that. You realize later on that that's actually not cool. Like, yeah, so Mina, Mina, I Part started of the system, your parents like, flush yeah. you off. Oh, listen, yeah. good school. Ah, I speak English. Yeah. Oh, it's, that's the, and, you, and you speak, yo. Oh, for, <laughs> for me, what? Guys, Mina, okay, cool, yeah. so. Oh, okay, shit. You want yeah, to proceed? You know, please proceed. Okay, it. cool. So here's what I envision, right? The reality is I can throw you into an industry, right? Mm -hmm. Filled with, dominated by white people. You will figure out the whole game because mm -hmm. it's all really laced out in English. And then you can find a way to flip the game on its head to find a way to introduce Abu Dhabi into it. I challenge that sure. completely. So, you know why? Because something's happened in my life and I call it ancestral. It's ancestral um, intervention. I have a business partner that I work with. His name is Mbongeni. Grew up, and I'm just going to be candid, in absolute poverty. But there's something strange about Mbongeni because our backgrounds are so completely, profoundly different. He comes from nothingness. Nothing. Every reason to not be what he is. I come from privilege. And there's something strange that happened. We both got put in this system. We got a job under the same company. And I figured out something strange. Ombongeni speaks extremely different from me. He, 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 scored, he, has, he could only go as fast as first year, I think, in engineering. And like he had to be in dot and go home and provide. But he has got an amazing ability to capture information at the same rapid rate as me, if not faster sometimes, and project it forward, bring it back to us so that we are able to make a very calculated and succinct business decision. Now, Fundi is not here to save anybody. Fundi is here to understand that the there are many Mbongenis out there. They look yes. and are packaged different. But, La Lela, you're not here. You're here to partner. You're here to know that the James have always been so, there. Okay, and that you didn't have to be like this to be so-called smart and be able to achieve in the system. Here's an example of it. Oh, fuck. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So, when I say that statement there, yeah. I'm not saying that there is no intelligence with Abu Dhabi. Yeah. What I am saying is that as Udaki coming with as a model C, the white people tend to listen. Oh, You've, yeah, yes. Okay, so sorry, Prof. Who should then say yes? Yeah. You being in a pitch ne, yeah. versus your homie yes. who's got all the right knowledge. Yes. Saying the same, pretty much saying everything better, everything, yes. all the right ideas yes. versus all model C. Yeah. The model C will be trusted. 
because That's correct. when the white people see the model C children, and all they yeah. see is they as close to us as possible. That's correct. So Sorry, then he's then a good guy. Like from guy. Yeah, 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 no, 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 hold up. So then yeah. when I say it's supposed to be the savior, it's like essentially what was it wasn't supposed to, like what has happened is that there's a separation that has happened where all of a sudden the fact that we even have the term model C mm. shows yeah. that we've separated each other. Yes. And w- w- and it comes on both sides to be like, okay, we get some more. Okay, cool. So it's a constant yes. cycle. And it's like, when I say we created to be the savers, it's like we created to be this, this in-between thing between Mahoa, the white system, and Abu Dhabi. And not to say that the black people are less, because guaranteed there's a philosopher stuck in Timbisa or Soweto who has these ideas that would blow up the world in terms of you'll have a mental orgasm. But yeah. because of the fact that you can't find a way to write it down in Islungu, it doesn't get out there. So he has social economic reality that is different. So part of the solution to our problem is creating our own of yeah. that, our own because like now we looking up the model C system is like, okay, cool. Look out for yourself, look out for yourself, look out for yourself. It's capitalism. It's it's hectic. So it's like instead of okay, cool, model C, you understand how to get you understand sponsorship. You understand advertising. You know understand that having eyes on anything is can actually be converted into something of value regardless of whatever it is. Yeah. So you understand how, if you had to try and implement a simple system in a hood and be like, my goal is to create ma- mad employment and keep it within the hood. You understand how to do that. You understand how to stock a, uh, to start a real stock file to actually create an institution that's constantly going to give back and lock the money in the hood to make sure that the hood eventually The problem with the model C, he's the first person out of yes, when he makes money the out of the hood instead of... Like channeling He's not even the first person out. He's barely involved in the hood. The and that. Sorry, yeah. we created already. Yeah. That already, yeah, that's exist. true. That's but true. It's the sad reality, though. But at the same time, it's it it that is true. But don't you think a huge part of it is is then the hood now with the model C being the cha- savior, man, man. The okay, let's not use the, the word savior. Let's see. Let's yeah. use yeah, whatever. Yeah, bridge. Bridge. Just, just bridge. whatever. Whatever, bridge, yeah, bring bridge, the bridge so and, and to, to, to connect the two worlds. And then he, he, they're hated on for, for being better. Most times for... It's not for, even for being better. It's just... It's, it's it's because, we know where we come because, from. Because your slungu puts you closer to whiteness. It's like there's a, constant, yeah. there's a constant hatred for... Okay, there's this subconscious hierarchy that we all play. That's where correct. we have... Okay, cool. So within black people... <clears throat> The yellow bone, okay, with the general idea is that they hate on yellow bones because they feel like because you're yellow bone, you're closer to whiteness. Um, you have the, the system where I've ex- experienced a fuckload more Indian racism towards black people here in Durban than I have anywhere else. Yeah. Even at festivals, life's been good here. Here I'm like, oh shit, there's actually a gap that you believe that you're better than me. Yeah. <laughs> Just because Weird. you are a tone. Uh, closer to whiteness, whiteness and so on. Yeah. So there's this whole thing where it's we're just constantly the competing with to be whiter and whiter and whiter. Sometimes and darker than ours. But the reality is there's this game that's being played subconsciously and we're not taking it out into the open to be like, look and judge ourselves so we can fix this. Yeah. So, yeah. so like, yeah. literally, that's where we are. So as a Model C person, then it's harder to even connect with the people you're supposed to find ways to be able to build together and um, as well for me another thing that's been important as a, a youth that's lived that you are describing my lived experience what's been important knowing that i was never separate from excellence it goes back to that that everything this whiteness that i revered the subconscious thoughts that that, that they are the standard of all things it is it is it i've had to actively go back to say as as black as i am i have never been separate from excellence and excellence is I, I have it by the by the virtue of the fact that I weigh this thing and it is brown and it's melanated and it is beautiful that already distinguishes me and says something about me and, and guys no my it's too deep or too spiritual for some people to comprehend but that is the reality is this bridge that we were supposed to be for everybody to walk on for everybody to cross over has collapsed and it was so necessary because where you thought my back, my spine would lead you to is absolute destruction. 
if God was it that stimulates whiteness and kills or stops, not even kills or maybe blocks you getting to know everything that you are about being black, then fuck, I leave you preach. I leave you preach. Like, do you yeah. understand? Like, fuck, <laughs> dog. Like, I am tired of this shit and I need to have a reawakening. And that is necessary. I think now. we all need a reawakening. Do you understand? But, but it's what I'm I, saying, making sense ish. Like, yeah. You understand? Yeah, I do yeah. care what you come from. Because like for me, like for a lot of the time, okay, a lot of the time when I was younger, it used to burden me already. Nah, Are you that, serious? Like I was all the way, okay, f- all the way from actually primary <laughs> throughout yeah. high school. And in high school, one of the closest friends, I'm f- first friends which I made was a friend of mine called Rats. Mm. And what I liked about him is the fact that Swa was sharp. Zul kills it. Swan kills it. Put him with the gangsters, kills it. Right. And for me, I was like, even to this day, no, if he calls me. like a Gemini. Huh? No, but, but I'm saying to this day, when he calls me, I'm like, dude, whatever you're doing, I know you can do better. And and it's literally because of the fact that when, like the fact that he can like place him anywhere in South Africa, he'll be able to connect with people. Yes. And because yes. of the fact that he's living that, he cannot see the value of that. Uh, the fact, like, like the, the ability yeah. to be able to connect people. Like, it's, it's, pe- it's like, so valuable. It's like you bring, it's like you, if you have to bring a, a group of Amapunu and Mahoa, they wouldn't be able to connect. Mm. But bringing somebody who's raised in, yeah, my mom was Afrikaans and my dad was a full blown white male mm. in terms of Lahoa, mm. all of a sudden, they, if he can find the connections and make connections for them to be able to actually come together as one yeah. thing. And that's the thing that we, this bridge <laughs> needs to become. Mm. like getting to like skills like let's have acting workshops in the hood let's let's yeah. actually yeah. shoot yeah. but i believe we are one of our gener- the generational hood. mandates as young black youth are to be beautiful catalysts and safe spaces for people that's all we are like you were saying that's catalyzing that guy you read He's a great catalyzer, meaning I can come in, I can connect, and, and, and something magical can happen. And ev- even if all the magic is, is just this conversation. The yeah. thing is, and the fact that he's in it and he can't see it, but you are, like, it's mad. But that that's uh, but he's already fulfilling a generational mandate, which is, I'm just sometimes a beautiful catalyzer of things. Not so much a bridge, but I'm here to catalyze ma. We as a team, same for Bill and Abelu. Gababonobuti, we need to improve in X, Y, and Z. Mike. We need to have systems. Microphone. Oh, we need to have we need to have systems in place. We've seen that there's not that we, we, we didn't have them before, but we need to re engineer. We are aware of that. But the only thing that needs to change, we are uncompromised in our identity. That's it. Go do the shit. No it. excuses. No excuses. And let's make being human a beautiful experience. Great if for nobody get. else for yourself. It is a beautiful experience. Yeah, if for nobody else for yourself. Being human is a beautiful it's experience. Is experience. It's fast, but though. human beings are shit. <laughs> they ain't shit. <laughs> Human beings are shit. Human but shout out to the real niggas. Good people. Shout Not out real to niggas. Me. Yeah, I know. Fundi's a real nigga. Ah, I'm a G. Thank you. I hope you're so humble. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen, Jehovah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Facebook, you can thank us for that one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Gosh. All right, cool. Uh, Is there anything else that you want to say? I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fundi. Thank you. Jimbo, thank you so much for having me here. I know that it's late. We had a celeb. I have a celeb in, 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 the, in the studio, bro. Do you understand, yeah, though, guys? Studio. For me, it's not even about it. It's about the fact that you <laughs> niggas doing flat. it. <laughs> you niggas doing it. You don't understand what this model is for me as a businesswoman. Anything is possible. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, America. guys, thank you for ha- happy having me what in the, the HD. is? Oh yeah, and your social media. Yeah, social media. My social then. media on my social media. Please follow me on uh, at fundi underscore zwane on my IG and go Facebook you fundi swa zwane or you can follow my fan page which is fundi zwane. Come page, onto the yo. pages and la la la. Let's engage. I love engaging with my fans. Yeah, and I encourage it. So please engage. Ani ask me How whatever do you, feel you want. About to using the word fans. I'm just asking. Safe. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I feel safe using the okay, word cool. fans. Or f- fanatics. Na- you know, yeah. There's nothing bad about it. It means fanatics. Is that what it means? Yes, Is that what it's fans, short for? It's fanatics. It sounds, it t- fanatics actually sounds. You're fanatic. Terrible. They're fanatics. Exactly. It's fans. No, yeah, then you're right. Then it's consistently and, and, and it's consistent and it's accurate. If that is. Because going into spa is that kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. What's up, PZ? Do you understand? So I, it, it, no, is, it is no. the most appropriate then, if that's the case. <laughs> but in Yabashunipa as well. And I understand that the, the journey that they are on, the journey that I'm on, and I'm clear now that I'm all on boundaries. And where can they catch you every day or on weekdays? Every day they can <laughs> catch you at 9.30 on ETV, yo! Every day, 9.30 ETV, uh, doing the things, respecting the craft the best way that I know how, honoring it the best way that I know how by playing good tunes. That's where they catch me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Gosh, you so much. That was much. such a breath of fresh Why, like, why can't it be like this cake? Yeah, 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 yeah,